All right. I don't know what all these buttons do. Okay. <laughs> I'm learning, man. I'm learning. I love these these Letterman. We got cue cards. I, I love these Letterman cards, man. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the answer. <laughs> the, the answer is yeah. Yeah. You got any gum? But the the, the real key there was uh, Coach Lanning has an existing relationship with the, with the new defensive coordinator that Rhodes has left and gone with Aranda or Aranda or whatever his name. Dave Aranda. Aranda, yeah. Aranda. Aranda excuse me. <laughs> Help me, Ronda. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever let uh, people tell you that Kirby Smart doesn't listen to the fans because, just like you wanted, he went out and got LSU's passing game coordinator. Now, given he was the passing game coordinator from 05 to 06, so yeah, not yeah, Joe Brady, yeah. but but you got, you got your wish. And I don't think Todd's quite as much – Geared to the air raid as he is the pro style. And you're, you're stealing my question because I was going to ask you: Is the air raid coming? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think in Kirby's lifetime. Unless, uh, <laughs> okay. Did you watch the Falcons this year? Yeah. It's Todd Mockin's offense. I mean, that's the guy calling the plays there. That's true. That's was, true. Uh, Dirk Cutter. Dirk Cutter. That's yep. who they work. Tampa Bay. That's pretty much their offense. I think. Yeah, said, come, come on to come on to Georgia. To, uh, could be the offensive coordinator in college. I, I, I like the hire. Uh, I like bringing Buster Douglas. And again, losing Sam Pittman Faulkner. is huge. I was gonna be, Buster Douglas would have been an I'm interesting hire. <laughs> so Buster for Faulkner. And he said Buster, Buster Douglas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do it every time. Why would you ever doubt Kirby taking anybody? I don't know many. I mean, I can't think of many guys he's missed on since I've been around here. Hey, well, I guarantee you Mullen's going to jump all, all over Vandegrift now, but well, I think he tried. We've had him in camps, and if you watch kids' mechanics, and again, I don't want to come off as some like quarterback a- analyst. You know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a jumped-up photographer, but I can tell you, having done this a long time, that kid looks sh- sharp when he goes through his mechanics. Uh, Brad Johnson signed off on him in eighth grade. He knows what it means to be a quarterback at Georgia, because uh, you know that's the thing about David Green growing up, you know, over there in Gwinnett. It's a huge factor if you can – guys like him and DJ Shockley and Zyre, all these guys over the years, you, you do it in the state, boy, you got it set. There and are nine 100 guys who are committed or signed with the University of Georgia in the top 100. I'm not a, a big math guy, but – When you said the top tackle, who was, we had who was right uh, Broderick Jones climbed up to number one in the nation. Good job, yep. Broderick. And you feel still feel good about him, right? I do feel good about Broderick. The James still do. Brown of recruiters. <laughs> Georgia with the number one and number two offensive well, tackle in ask, the class of 2020. You, you, you took my question because I'm saying <laughs> Tate Rattledge comes in at number 12. So if you got Tate Rattledge at 12 and uh, Broderick Jones at five, who is there one? Where did Paris Johnson want? Paris Johnson, I believe, becomes third on the list. That's what he gets for going to Ohio State. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that there's a, a running back spot available uh, if if everything gets cleared up with Edwards or you know something comes of this this Evans scuttlebutt. So see, you're just your fault now. I was going to say this is my last show at being being 74 years old, but I got one more maybe. All right, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs>